All right, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to be doing the e-brake uh, brake shoes on a 2000 Mercedes SLK 230. Not to be confused with the uh, brake pads on these cars. There is actually some brake shoes, as you can see in the video, um, that wear out over time. Uh, it usually takes a very long time, but uh, I have seen them wear out, and in this particular application, it has worn out on this car. So we've got the brake shoes there. I'm going to also be using uh, some rust release uh, WD-40 uh, penetrant spray just to loosen up any uh, of the parts in the hub that may have uh, frozen over with rust over time. Um, there is a nut that holds the hub uh, for this Mercedes and, and in this particular uh, car it's 30 millimeter in size so I have uh, two different um, you know sockets that are 30 millimeter in size uh, a deep one as well as the, the shallower one I'm not sure which one I'll use yet typically I, I like to use a hardened steel um, but since I'm not going to be using a breaker as far as um, impact wrench I'm just going to go ahead and use the hand release ones today I also have a breaker bar um, any kind of wrench will do and um, for all applications, I like to also include, you know, typical uh, gloves just to protect your hands. There's no need for your hands to have cuts or get, you know, toxic grease on your hands anymore. And as always, um, I like to stress the importance of safety. Um, make sure you operate in a safe, clean environment. Use your jack that. Uh, you have as well as jack stands to hold the car up once you're working um, doubling up on safety you want to have uh, you want to have your jack stands in conjunction with your jack all right now that we've gotten the uh, you know the car jacked up the wheel taken off I like to keep all of my bolts in a container as I take them off put everything in the same container so that when I'm repeating or reversing my steps everything is here um, so the next thing that we're going to do, since we're going into the uh, the hub, we're going to have to remove what we call the uh, a hub safety uh, nut holder, and that's taken off with an Allen wrench. And what I've done looks like to, it's a Torx uh, 30, but I'm just using a regular uh, Allen wrench, and I like to use the rubber mallet just to loosen that up a little bit. That should come right off. We also have to take off the, so that's that part right there. We're also going to have to take off the, um, the caliper, but I'm going to do that last. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to remove is the, um, the hub nut, and it uh, has a little safety uh, edge on it that you bend into place on that. So to remove it, we got to we got to bend that back up. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten that just a little bit. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can continue to hammer away at that little notch. It's pushed in. that all right so that's off next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take off the caliper all right so now to take off the caliper those are 16 millimeter bolts one here and the other one down below but I've already sprayed the penetrating um, rust eating WD-40 on it but I'm gonna just put a little bit more on that and uh, like I said it's a, it's a 16 millimeter I'm gonna go ahead and use um, a small breaker bar that I have to remove that and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use my, um, my rubber mallet to do that
Okay, so that's the first one. So I'm going to put these in the pan. Now I'm going to just physically slide that off. Spray a little bit more of my WD-40 penetrant on this. I've already sprayed it down pretty good already. Make sure when you're doing so that the emergency brake lever is not pulled up. Now I'm going to start to take off the hub. So just gently with your mallet tap all the way around these edges here. That's to loosen up the brake on the inside and then Tap that off like that. That will expose a number of things. It's going to expose the hub. It's also going to expose the um, the brake shoes. This is one brake shoe here. And one another brake shoe there. Okay, when uh, replacing any part, before you take off that part, you should line up the new part to make sure that the notch is on it match etc before you go removing um, those parts so does this line up with the replacement part yes it does and check both sides as well down below just to make sure that everything is right once that is set next thing you do is you pay special attention to see where the the connection points are what connects to what the springs these are a little bit more involved than doing a simple um, brake pad replacement because there's springs underneath there's a adjustment lever here that may need to be adjusted etc so just pay special attention to that all right to get these things off you just push and push and turn simple as that take off this spacer once that is off everything will loosen up a little bit more get this spring off And it pops off like that. Now, placing the uh, parts back on the ground there, what we need to do is we need to reconstruct with the new parts what that looks like. All right, so when we're putting these back together, right, this loaded spring here has to be in front of the uh, brake shoes like that, okay? The top springs go behind. Let's put the rear springs up top here. Now we gotta worry about this guy, which goes down below. Remember that goes in front. Like okay. Most of it is put back together. Now I'm gonna have to stretch that spring. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put on the retaining pin on the brake shoe. And there are two of them one on each side, one for each shoe. Then we're going to put back on the rotor, making sure that we place it on and hammer it in place just gently. We're then going to put on the nut, doing it by hand at first and then we're going to torque that down 
to 120 PSI or 120 pounds per square inch. Don't forget to put on the safety retainer, hammering down the clip back into the notch. You can use the screwdriver just like we did to take it off. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to put back on the caliper and the uh, two 16 millimeter bolts and then torque that down. Of course doing everything by hand first and then using the breaker bar to tighten it back in place. Once that's done, put back on the wheel and you're good to go.